You're listening to Myers-Briggs Question Corner with Edith Richards. Hello, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Myers-Briggs Question Corner. I came across an interesting question on social media the other day. Is the MBTI outdated? I think it's added value in its time, but personally, I don't think it's useful now. Sadly, most organizations and HR use it. It's outdated for current talent and teams. Okay, so there's a lot I'm going to dissect from this question and statement, but I'm going to start with this. The Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or MBTI, is a tool. And like all tools, it's useful for some things, but not everything. This personality assessment is useful in helping you to understand your strengths and opportunities. In other words, for increasing your self-awareness. And the benefit of self-awareness is this. If you're not aware of what you're feeling or why you're feeling it, let's say you don't even know that what you're doing is actually really turning people off. You have no idea of that. How can you even begin to make a change to adjust your behavior? So that's where I believe the true benefit of the Myers-Briggs comes in. So when you're not self-aware, and in this case, when you don't know about your personality type, you're going to behave in ways that are innately comfortable for you. You're going to move forward without conscious thought in your decisions, in how you treat other people and how you communicate and how you go about your daily life. By having a discussion on your underlying personality, you'll recognize that not everyone operates the same way you do. You'll discover that, hey, this is why I never got along with this person. This is why there's a conflict here. This is why I've always liked these types of activities and tasks. This is why I've had trouble communicating this way. Now, these are discussions that can be useful for anyone, regardless of what your job is, or if you're still in school, if you're trying to communicate better with your significant other or your family. There are many different applications of the MBTI, but I'd say the self-awareness piece that comes from really understanding what the Myers-Briggs measures is even more important for leaders. Speaking of which, I do have a two-part podcast series on which Myers-Briggs types make the best leaders, and I'll include that link in the podcast notes. So in terms of being outdated, I'm going to push back on that statement. These concepts that we're talking about here understanding your inherent personality type, applying it to leadership or communication or career development, enhancing your self-awareness. These aren't outdated topics. They are timeless topics. So, okay, the Myers-Briggs is the world's oldest personality assessment. It was first published back in 1942. So if you want to look at it as being outdated, yeah, it's pretty old, but it measures the very same things today that it measured in 1942. And that is four broad-based dichotomies of personality. And there's a lot of misunderstanding about this assessment. And a lot of this is due to not understanding what, in fact, it's measuring. Most of the quote-unquote cool assessments today use a Likert scale, which is a five or seven point scale, which allows the user to express how much they agree or disagree with a particular statement. For example, strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, and strongly disagree. The Myers-Briggs uses a different measurement called a binary sorting method, which is very rare to see these days, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But let's face it, we live in a data-driven world, more so today than ever. We want predictions and diagnosis and for everything to fit nice and neatly into our little boxes. And there's a sense of comfort that comes with this degree of predictability. And I get it. It's important to measure our successes and make predictions about who's the best candidate for the job or where we should invest our money. And the MBTI is an instrument that by its very nature doesn't tick off a lot of those boxes. 
So we have this inclination to view personality assessments as something to measure us. And again, that's not where the value in the MBTI is. The MBTI is designed to identify personality preferences. So when you take the assessment, each response is a forced choice. You choose either A or B. And yes, sometimes I do A and sometimes I do B. It depends. But the assessment actually has you choose one over the other and then it ranks them in order of preference. And there's been a lot of criticism about this over the years. And if you'd like to read more about this, I'm inviting you to check out my article entitled Myers-Briggs Myths and Misinformation, available on my website, www.atopcareer.com. Now, interestingly enough, the reason the assessment is written this way is that Carl Jung, on whose work the assessment is based, theorized that people have a preference for using their minds in a certain way. It doesn't mean they actually do use their minds this way all the time. That's just not possible. We all have to behave in ways that are contrary to who we are most naturally and comfortably. But this is where so much of the misunderstanding comes up with the MBTI. And I'd like to cite a recent article entitled The Myers-Briggs Assessment is No Fad by Dr. Richard Thompson, who's head of research and development at CPP and the Myers-Briggs Company, who are continually defending criticisms of the assessment. The fact is that the validity and reliability of the MBTI has been very well documented in thousands of peer-reviewed journals and case studies, and this information is freely and publicly available online to anyone who's interested. Now, there's one other piece in this week's question that I feel compelled to address, and that is, most organizations and HR use it, meaning the MBTI. Well, that's a blanket statement, and I'm not sure how accurate it is. I've actually seen organizations using the MBTI less in recent years compared to other assessments that seem to be readily available, because these other ones are way cooler, especially with all the emphasis on the big five personality traits. But I'll say this once again, all of these are measuring different things than the MBTI measures. With that said, of course, there are some organizations and people who do continue to use the Myers-Briggs. Unfortunately, and this is where there is a limitation, an individual doesn't have to go through a formal certification process to be able to administer the MBTI. They only need to demonstrate that they have educational eligibility, meaning graduate coursework in statistics or a master's degree in order to be eligible to purchase and administer assessments. And this is really unfortunate as it undermines the quality of the instrument and users won't necessarily get the benefit of the expertise of a qualified practitioner who can explain their type preferences to them in a way that's meaningful. And again, this is truly the benefit of not just the Myers-Briggs, but of any personality assessment. But as we've said before, people continue to want to predict things, to check off their little boxes, to know who's the best person for this leadership role or who's the best candidate for the job, for example. And in their zeal to do this, they misuse the Myers-Briggs. The Myers-Briggs is not intended to predict anything, success, aptitude, happiness, whatever. It's really unfortunate to see the MBTI used in hiring and recruiting. It's highly unethical to do this, and the Myers-Briggs company has strict guidelines against this. In the case of hiring and recruiting, it's ridiculous to think that a personality inventory can be used to predict behavior or success in any job. The MBTI is not a predictive instrument and should never be used as such. In the listening notes, I'm going to include a link to a previous podcast entitled Myers-Briggs in Hiring and Recruiting. It can and should, however, be used in leadership development type programs to help participants understand their natural styles and encourage them to flex themselves when dealing with someone who is very different. When the information gleaned from the MBTI is framed in a way that's productive 
to the group or individual and used to enhance team building, communication, and self-awareness, I still believe it can be a very effective tool for personal, professional, or even spiritual growth. To sum up my thoughts on the MBTI being outdated, it's not, in my opinion, but many people continue to misunderstand what the assessment is intended to measure and criticize it for not being a predictive tool. The purpose of taking the assessment is not the four-letter code you'll receive. The purpose is to facilitate a discussion between the interpreter and the respondent where the respondent can determine his or her best way of functioning or best fit type. My role as interpreter is to use the assessment to assist in my client's self-awareness. It's important though that limitations of the assessment are discussed. We don't want to make the mistake of using the Myers-Briggs as a determinant or to judge someone based on their four letters. We are all individuals with unique struggles and perspectives. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you liked this episode, please do me a favor and give it a share and be sure to subscribe to Myers-Briggs Question Corner on your favorite podcast platform. I'm Edith Richards, Myers-Briggs Master Practitioner, signing out. Until next week. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you'd like to hear more, or you'd like to submit a question yourself, then you can find us at www.atopcareer.com. Until next time. MBTI and Myers-Briggs are registered trademarks of the MBTI Trust.